So the Choctaws will get the football first, and Taylor Crabtree, the junior from Pascagoula at East Mississippi Community College, tees it up, and we are underway as the kick will be taken at the 11-yard line and the return to the far numbers by Jamori Mark past the 30 out to the 32. And the Choctaws will start up there first and 10. So Aaron Fiesel will get the start at quarterback for Mississippi College. Again, Dietrich Hawthorne, the Choctaw starter for the first nine games of this year. In the concussion protocol as of last Monday, not cleared to play today. And so it's the redshirt sophomore from Diamond Head, 7 of 19 passing, 173 yards, one touchdown, one interception. He gets the start for Mississippi College today. Wide out to the left side. Everybody else bunched in tight as the Choctaws move right to left here in the first quarter. Opening drive of the ball game, and Fiesel will turn and give to Lampkin off right tackle, and he's hit hard at the 37-yard line. He'll pick up about four yards. You know, this may be one of those games where four or five yards and a cloud of rubber pellets is something the Choctaws are going to use to their advantage. Yeah, with the offensive line, good push there on the first play. Gain of four or five yards. I mean, you add that up all day. You get three of those, that's a first down any way you add it up. Four yard, maybe five on that first uh, play of the game. Second down, we'll say officially six here for Mississippi College. Again, one wide receiver to the left side as Mark goes in motion, and it's Fiesel starting right, then heading up the middle, and he picks up the first down to the 45-yard line. So Aaron Fiesel picks up the first down for Mississippi College. 6'4", 230 out of Hancock High School. Physically, as we mentioned, a much different runner than the starting quarterback, Dietrich Hawthorne, 5'8", 170, but he can get the job done in this triple option and he picks up a first down here. I don't think Coach Larendine is going to do anything other than run the football and try to control this uh, this defensive line of the Statesman on this first drive and pretty much probably the, the whole whole entire game. First and 10 for the Choctaws at their own 44. This is going to be another running play for the quarterback, and he's going to be wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. He's number 50. I think I saw 53 come in and make the stop, but I guess it was 56. And then, and also Chandler Hector in on the stop, along with Josh Bradford. Gained of only two yards, second down eight. By the way, uh, today, Coach Lauren Dean's birthday. Happy birthday, Coach Lauren Dean. Let's see if we can get him a win. Second down eight for the Choctaws. Opening drive of the game just underway here in Cleveland. Line of scrimmage is the 46. Choctaws moving right to left here in the first quarter. Lampkin is the fullback, double wing back set. And the blitz being shown, and the give is to Lampkin off right tackle only to the 48. So this is going to set up a third down six for Mississippi College. Yeah, it could be a passing situation here. Third down and a long six. So uh, let's see what uh, they get dialed up on the offensive side of the ball for the Choctaws. The Choctaws at 38% on third downs this year. They were 3 of 16 against West Alabama last week. Not a good performance in a game that they lost 24 to 3. Delta State giving up 33% on third downs. The line to gain here is the DSU 46-yard line. So two wide outs, one to either side. Two in the backfield as Fiesel goes up under center, and he'll turn, make the handoff, and there's the pitch. And this is Freeman coming to the near side, and Colt trying to reach the line. He's out to the 47, and this is going to be close. The initial indication is that he didn't get there. Off the left -hand side. And it's going to be fourth down and about a yard. Yeah, about fourth down and a yard. Good, really good, I guess, coming back from being down on the play from uh, Delta State really came up. Uh, and they're really able to stop them right there to the line of the game. So Coach John Bland elects to send the punting unit out onto the turf here at Parker Field on fourth and one. And Delta State will get a chance at a return, and the Choctaws will get a chance to pin them deep. Darren Gardenhire, a senior from Los Angeles by way of Montana State. is back deep to receive this kick at the 10-yard line. That's a curious route for sure. Yeah. And this is going to be a punt for McCarter. And he rolls to the right and punts, and it bounces at the 20. Takes a Choctaw roll inside the 15 all the way down to the 11, and Delta State will be backed up there first and 10. 11-16 to play, first quarter, no score in the game. Choctaw's got it to just pass midfield, but no further. And now here comes the DSU offense, led by the freshman from South Panola, where they have a pretty good high school program, I'm told. Yeah, Patrick Shegog. 
5'11", 185 out of Batesville. He's thrown for over 1,600 yards, eight touchdowns, but 10 interceptions this season. A minus four turnover margin for Delta State. So she got at quarterback of the pistol. He'll turn and hand it off, and the Choctaw defense meets him at the line of scrimmage. That's Colton McGee, the man we talked about in the pregame show, limits the gain for Keelan Wilson in just two yards. Yeah, good pursuit by the defense for the Choctaws, really kind of bottling up the uh, uh, the running back for Delta State to bring up a second and long situation. Keelan Wilson, a sophomore, and they're at running back. And this is going to be Sheegog with a pass, and we've got a flag on the near side of the field, and that play never developed, and that was because there was a false start. Yeah, and real, real lucky Sheegog was actually paying attention because the ball was snapped early. And, and a couple, a couple of linemen went. Nobody else did. The ball was snapped. He was able to catch it, but it's going to be a penalty. This is an experienced offensive line for Delta State. Four seniors and a red. Excuse me, four juniors and a redshirt senior. But the freshman quarterback and a sophomore running back. And it's been a tough sled this year for the Delta State offense. Second down, 14 now. And uh, Sheegong's going to bring it to the near side himself, finds the seam out across the 20 down to the 24-yard line Sheegong before Brandon Pete Sheegong. brings him down, and that'll be a first down for Delta, Delta State. State yeah, Sheegong is one of their leading rushers on this team and uh, carries the ball effectively on that play. So DSU moves the change, no ball score. It's the first drive of the DSU. game for Delta State. We're approaching 10 minutes to play in the first. Now Sheegog will shift the tight end to the right side. On first and 10, and it's a handoff. It's Wilson to the near side, and Wilson out across the 30 to the 31, bringing up second down three. Wilson's run for 425 yards Wilson coming in. Right -hand side. Six touchdowns, averaging 47 play. yards second per ball game. Three. Ball is marked at the 31 of the green and white. Really think the offensive lines for each team are going to be so key today as to who gets the win. Second down three, Choctaws come over the corner blitz and the handoff to the running back out to the 32 and good job by Sheegog to get that ball out of his hands. Calvin Sims Jr. in on the tackle for MC. If he doesn't get rid of the ball, he's gonna be buried back at the 20. Yeah, he was under heavy pressure and was able to get the ball to his running back and a good play by Sims Jr. Now a third down and short situation for Delta State. And again, Delta State last in the league on third downs. And on third down and two, it's Sheegog, and he's got it here across the 35 to the 36. He needed two, he got four. And Delta State moves the chain. No score in the ball game with 9.03 to play in the first quarter. Ball is marked at the 36 of Delta State. Statesman moving left to right. Ball of the near side hash mark at the 36 yard line. Sheegog with a running back to his left. They'll fake it to him and throw over the middle, and the pass is nearly intercepted. Trey Thompson had it in his hands. He just couldn't bring it in. Yeah, Thompson really had that one around the 41-yard line, couldn't reel it in. Might have been, it could have been all that real estate he saw in front of him and not able to get that ball in before uh, looking, hey, where am I going to run with it? Yeah, lots of Oka Green in front of him there, but Thompson, who has already picked off one pass this year, nearly had another one. And again, that's been an issue with Delta State. Ten interceptions thrown by the freshman quarterback. Second and 10 for Delta State from the 36 of DSU. Snap, handoff, Wilson, sweep to the right side, got a block of the 40, 45, 50, down the near sideline, still in bounds, inside Choctaw territory, down to the 37 yard line. Good blocking along the right side of that line for Delta State, and the statesmen are inside Choctaw territory. And you kind of wonder if some of the defensive uh, pursuers for Mississippi College kind of gave up around the 50 yard line, because it looked like he was going out of bounds, but he cut it back up and got about 10 more yards. First and 10 for Delta State at the Choctaw 38 in a scoreless first corner as Sheegog's going to look for the quick pass right side and it's deflected at the line of scrimmage. I think that was Derek Cawthorn, the safety, who came in and deflected the pass. Second and 10 coming up. That's what they teach you. If you can't get to the quarterback, put your hand up and see if you can uh, get your paw on the ball. And that's exactly what happened. So second down 10 from the Choctaw 38. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. 
As Shigog with a running back to either side of him in the backfield. He'll take the snap, fake to Wilson, run it himself straight up the middle, across the 30, 25, 20, tripped up around the 20 yard line. Else he might have scored on that play. It's Derek Hawthorne again with what might have been a touchdown saving tackle. Yeah, it, it, the middle of the field just opened up. Great blocking by Delta State's offensive line. And Shigog takes it for a first down in the red zone now for Delta State. So time here for the Choctaw defense to stiffen first and 10 for. Delta State at the Choctaw 18-yard line. And Shegog, after a little hesitation, is going to run it to the right side of the Choctaw, slow him down. And eventually the play is ruled dead. Colton McGee on the stop for Mississippi College. Well, I apologize, everybody that's listening. It's it's the green zone here at Delta State. The green from zone. What, from well, what everything's, I just heard, That's so. right. Everything's <laughs> green here at Delta State, in case you haven't noticed. Of the blue and gold. That's a gain out to the 12-yard line, and it's second down four. Learn something new every day. Two receivers to the short side of the field to the right. Shegog takes the snap, hands off to Wilson straight ahead. Wilson with a seam, cuts to the outside. He scores. Touchdown, Delta State. 12-yard touchdown run for Keelan Wilson, his seventh touchdown of the year. The Statesman strike first. Comes with 7 11 to play in the first. Yeah, just a lot of open running room and lanes over the right side of the defense for the Choctaws. And uh, Delta State made it look pretty easy running the football. Taylor Crabtree, 19 of 21, kicking point afters this year, and he gets that one to go. Here at 7 0 Delta State off a Kalon Wilson 12 yard touchdown run. But a drive that started inside their own 20, and the kickoff for the Choctaws is taken out to the 23-yard line by Shaquille Gates. That was number seven, Shaquille Gates. So the Choctaws will start at the 23 on this, their second drive of the game. The other game that is uh, taking place later this afternoon, actually it may be underway here in just a moment, West Florida and West Alabama, each of those teams four and three in the league play and with playoff hopes. The third playoff bid is going to go to either Florida Tech, West Florida, West or West Alabama. And my guess is it's going to be West Alabama, based on who we've seen this year and their right. performance. First and ten for Mississippi College, down seven to nothing here in the first quarter with 7:05 to play. Choctaw send a receiver left and a receiver right. The pitch goes near side to Colt Freeman. And Freeman out across the 30. And uh, that is going to be a nice pickup for the senior from Lewisburg High School, Chris Pickett, junior from Fort Walton Beach, Florida, on the tackle. A nine-yard gain for Colt Freeman. It's only his fifth carry of the year. He's been used mainly as a blocking back. Yeah, well, Jamari Mark was the one that was blocking in front of Freeman. He was able to spring him free for a nice little run, nine yards on that first down carry. Second down one, Aaron Fiesel in at quarterback for Mississippi College. Up under center he goes. He'll give it to Lampkin off right tackle. First down pickup out to the 40-yard line. Tackle made by Brandon Tillman. And again, in case you missed it, Dietrich, in case you're just tuning in, Dietrich Hawthorne, the Choctaw's quarterback, the starter for the first nine games of the year in the concussion protocol as of last Monday, not cleared to play today. So it's going to be Aaron Fiesel, who had plenty of playing time last year as a freshman, mainly as a backup, and he's gotten a, a good bit of action this year too. Play clock is at 10. He'll send him down at the 39-yard line, first and 10 for Mississippi College. And it's Lampkin bulldozing his way down to the 45. First contact was about the 41, and Tiberius, they're going to say his knee was down at the 44. Yeah, I think uh, MC has seen something on the right side of the defensive line, uh, Delta State, and, and that's the second time they've gone to it uh, in this drive, uh, the fourth time in this ball game, and it, it kind of exposing that defensive line on the right side with almost like kind of like a trap play uh, with Lampkin. So it's a second down six for MC now with a man in motion to the near side. And here's Lampkin this time to the left and out to the 50. He goes, and that'll be a first down Lampkin for Mississippi College. Side, picks up the first down. You know, it's not real flashy. It's not. It's probably not going to sell you many tickets, but it, it looks like that. that's going to be the, the recipe to move the ball down the field is these these trap plays and, and kind of not as much as the quick hitters on the outside with, with you know, uh, throwing the ball and, 
and pitching the ball and that kind of thing that you use with Hawthorne a lot. First down to the 50-yard line. First and 10 for Mississippi College with 4.54 to play in the first. 7-0 Delta State is the score. Fiesel hands it off to Lampkin again. This time he's bunched up behind the line and just is able to lumber forward for two yards, and that's about it. So second and eight coming up, Tiberius, the senior from Sturgis, Mississippi. Went to Mississippi State for a spell, found his way to East Mississippi Community College, and now it is second year at MC. Five touchdowns on the year coming in for Tiberius. And I've got to say, of all the players that I have interviewed over the years, and there have been a lot of them, college and high school, none more engaging than Tiberius Lampkin, whom we talked to about three weeks ago. Really? Absolutely. 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 After, in fact, after the interview, I said, hey, look, if you ever want to do this, <laughs> and it's what you and I are doing, right, you, know, you yeah. can do this. He's good. Second down and eight. And this is going to be another running play off to the right side and out to the 46. And, Fizel, and that is going to be Fizel on the keeper for the record. We're not we like our jobs. But I'm just I saying, was fixed to say it. Don't give him my job. You have yours. Uh, he's just such an well, engaging personality and uh, did a great job. He shared his testimony, I, I do believe, at the uh, the uh, banquet the other night on campus featuring the two-time Heisman Trophy winner, uh, Archie Griffin. $200,000 raised for Choctaw Athletics in that banquet. All right, third and six. Choctaws need the 40 here to convert. And here's a keeper, and Fiesel's going to throw for the first time. Lofts it right side of the pass is thrown to thrown and incomplete into pretty tight coverage, looking for Morgan Sharp. Not a lot of zip on that throw, and it's fourth down. Broken up by the state. Now it's fourth down and six, but from the 46, and here comes the bunny. Yeah, Chris Pickett, a great play by the defensive back for uh, Delta State. Ball was a little underthrown. If a little more air under it, uh, it might be a completion for a big Choctaw game. But uh, a good play by Pickett. Get his hand on the ball. Brings up a fourth down punting situation for the Choctaws. And so McCarter on to punt for the second time of the ball game. His first was a 35-yard effort. Line of scrimmage here is the 46. Rolls out to the right, and that rugby-style punt is shanked to the right side, and it goes out of bounds around the, well, we'll say they spotted. The official's got a long way to run. Eagles. Keeps jogging down the sideline. So they probably spotted right around the 41-yard line. There you go, 42-yard line. And so probably McCarter's worst punt of the year. You know, that's a situation, if you know you're going to get a punt like that, Go for it. You only lose three yards of, you know, but you, know, you never know that. You know. And the way Delta State moved the ball on their opening drive, you don't want to give them any kind of field position near midfield by going for it and not making it. So the Choctaws punt it away, but by and large, they give it to them near the line of scrimmage, the 42. And Sheegock's going to throw on first down, right side toss caught. Receiver down at the 49. Elijah Rogers, Colton McGee combining on the stop. You can see the uh, the arm talent that Shigog has. He's got some zip on that ball, just with that little little quick hitter to the flat. And uh, got some zip on that ball, but uh, accuracy is just the issue with him. And here's Wilson on the draw, and he's going to be stopped from behind. I don't think he got to the line of scrimmage. It's Michael Washington, Jr., the senior from Collegeville, Mississippi, Northwest transfer, who stopped him after only a one-yard gain. Third and one for Delta State. Third down and one for DSU. Two twenty-six to play in the first. Seven nothing states for the score. Again, Shegog from the pistol with Wilson behind him. There's the snap. Wilson straight ahead, and he got the first down. He did the forty-eight. Got the forty-seven and a half. And that's another Delta State. So the states would move the chains. Talked about their third down. Troubles coming into this contest. They're two of two on third downs in this game. Up Mississippi College. First and 10 for Delta State at the Choctaw 47 yard line. Shegok fakes the handoff. He's going to throw. Rolls out right side pass caught at the 37 of the receiver down to the 32. That is going to be number 81, Benji Galbraith. Senior from Olive Branch, also played in Lewisburg High School with Colt Freeman. And 
And a first down pickup for the Statesman at the 33. Yeah, good looking pass play to the tight end. He just kind of went out to 10, 11 yards and then turned to the sideline and she got, was able to put the ball on it. First down for Delta State at the Choctaw 33 as the Statesman continue to move the ball efficiently and Shegog jumps over a defender at the 30 out to the 25. He goes, you hear the crowd moving on just a little bit as Shegog with the hurling play. Picks up nearly nine yards on first down. Yeah, he went airborne there. The track coach is uh, already heading down to the sideline to sign him up. Second and one coming up. This offensive line for Delta State, very experienced. Carter, Claude the fifth, Hales, Short, and Jones, four seniors and uh, four juniors, rather, and a senior on the O-line. They're doing a great job so far. Wilson gets the handoff again, has another first down across the 15 down to the 14-yard line. And we're under a minute to play in the first. And the Delta State Statesmen are in what they would say the green zone. Statesmen do not huddle up. They'll send two receivers out to the left side. And now they'll switch the tight end to the left side on first and ten. And it's Wilson off the left side where that tight end went, and he's out across the 10, picking up nearly five yards on the play. As the clock rolls down to 15 seconds, and I think that's going to be the final play of the first quarter. It is. After one, Delta State has a 7-0 lead on a 12-yard touchdown run by Keelan Wilson. It's second down, six for Delta State at the Choctaw 10-yard line as we start the second quarter. Empty backfield with Shegog, and he takes the snap, and he stumbles a bit and will be pushed back. Good job there by Trey Thompson. He doesn't get credit for the tackle, but he got his offensive lineman in the backfield and kind of slowed that play up enough and limited it to just one yard gain. It's a kind of a nice play by Thompson that may go you know, unrecognized in the big picture, but that was a nice play. Yeah, big third down play coming up here. Third down at about five. Uh, the ball is just on the nine yard line. So let's see if the Choctaws can get off the field. Delta State two of two on third down so far in this game. Third down, they need the four yard line to convert. Shegok's gonna throw and the pass is caught. Right side on a post pattern touchdown. Leon Green, a senior from right down the road at Eastside High School in Cleveland. And Delta State extends the lead to 13 to nothing. Yeah, the Statesman receiver was basically so open that the ball didn't have to be perfect. Shegok threw the ball behind the receiver on the slant, but he was able to reel it in for the touchdown. Delta State up 13 to zero. That's the third touchdown of the year for Leon Green, only his 13th catch of the season. So good efficiency from that standpoint. Point Point after is good. And with 14-22 to play in the second, Delta State leads Mississippi College 14 to nothing. And I know both of these teams would love to get back to the point to where they look forward to an extra game or two or three or more. For the Choctaws, it's been a long climb back since the return to Division II. Progress made this year for sure. Delta State, this is a pretty significant bump on the road. One win coming into today's action. Kick taken to the 15-yard line by Jamori Mark and a return out past the 30 to the 32. Some good field position for Mississippi College to start this drive right at the 32-yard line. Let's see if they can get something going. You know, you, you basically have taken a, a couple of punches to the mouth here in this uh, first part of this first half, down 14-0. to zero. Let's see if the Choctaws can come back and uh, show us what they're made of and uh, get some points on the board. Mississippi College. We'll start at their own 32-yard line, line, first and 10. First Mentioned the good crowd on hand here today. Off. Dr. Blake Thompson, the new president of Mississippi College, on the bus with plenty of students. Uh, saw them on the way up here this morning. First and 10 for the Choctaws, their own 32, and Lampkin gets the call. Stutter step up the middle across the 40. Good gain of eight, second and two coming up. Also see the guys from Civitan are here. And uh, they're braving the elements with the bare chests and the letters on the chest that I think go out. They didn't have enough to spell go Choctaw, so it's go MC exclamation point. That's creative. Very creative. (laughs) Second down two. It's 47 degrees outside for the record. Second and two. And it's going to be a pass play for Fiesel. He's going to loft it right side for for, for, uh, Rodenberry, and it's incomplete. 
That just hung up there too long, gave the defensive back too much time to disrupt the play. Yeah, Cole Rottenberry had to turn into a defensive back there because the ball just hung and hung. And, uh, you know, both of them went up trying to get the ball, but uh, looked like the Delta State defender had a little more chance to, to reel that one in. The Choctaws are last in the conference in passing yards per ball game, 100 yards per game through the air, and a lot of that comes on big plays. And with Hawthorne, the scrambler out today, Fiesel is going to have to get a little more zip on those throws. Third and two, they need the 42 to convert. Lampkin gets the call, and he's going to get it to the 43. When in doubt, give it to Tiberius Lampkin. Yeah, he just lowered his head and was able to push through for a couple yards with the first down, move the chains, and uh, – uh, keep this offense on the field. It's going to be interesting to see how many carries Tiberius gets today. You know he wants to carry the ball about 30, 35 times. I don't think that's going to happen, but I think a 20-carry game is not out of the realm of possibility for Tiberius, and this is his final game as a collegian. Here's an option pitch back to the near side. Mark, and the play did not develop as Delta State read it well, and Mark's going to be tackled back at the 40, maybe the 41-yard line. Several gray shirts there to not allow that block to develop that was key to making that play happen. Yeah, they were able to eat up the block with three defenders for Delta State and were able to get a mark down on the play, a loss of about three yards. So it's second down 13 for MC back at the 40-yard line. We're at 12.45 to play in the second quarter, and Delta State leads Mississippi College 14 to nothing. Wideouts to either side here for MC as Fiesel goes up under center. And an option keeper, and uh, he's not going to get but about a yard or two. He was looking over his left shoulder for Drew Kroger. In retrospect, that might have been the best option. Yeah, if he'd have, if he'd have uh, trying to get that ball to Kroger, he would have been gobbled up. There were two Delta State defenders there. That was the option uh, that should have been taken, and uh, he did take that. Only gain of one, now third down and long from the 40, uh, just shy of the 42-yard line. All right, big third down conversion try here for MC. The Choctaws just one of three on third downs in this game. And they need the Delta State 47 to convert. Fiesel up under center, Lampkin behind him. Aaron drops back, he's going to throw. Steps into it, fires over the middle, pass caught. Rodenberry at the 49, escapes his man. Out across the 45, he goes to the 44. First down, Choctaw. Yeah, at first of all, we thought uh, Cole Rodenberry made a mistake, ran his route short, but he was able to break free from the defender and spin, get a couple more yards for the first. The Choctaws move the chains, and they're now at the 44-yard line of Delta Delta State, first and 10. State's been up two touchdowns here early in the second quarter. Wide out far to the left side is Rotenberry. Kroger comes in motion, and Lampkin gets the call. Off right tackle down to the 42. Limited gain of two yards. Lampkin on the short gain. Second down eight upcoming here for Mississippi College. For the Choctaws. Choctaws, a rare no huddle as they scramble back up to the line on second down eight, trying to catch the Statesman off balance. But now, Fiesel reads the defense, looks over to the sideline, and the new play call being sent in. Second down eight for MC. And it's a pitch left side. And this is Freeman with room to run. First down pickup to the Choctaw sideline and out of bounds to the 32 as he made somebody pay there at the end. Yeah, there's a penalty marker on the play around the 40-yard line. That's going to be a holding oh. uh, just uh, on uh, Mississippi College, so that's going to come back. Oh, jeez, Louise. It, 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 it was the, uh, the blocker. I'm not really sure for Mississippi College who it was, but the lead blocker on that play after the pitch basically tackled the defender, and you, you can't do that. I mean, it was – I saw it, and I was like, okay, I can't believe they ain't called it, and then, of course, the flag came out. Yeah. So. And that's a, the, a terrible time for the first penalty of the game yeah. called against MC. And that had the Choctaws uh, inside the 30. There yeah. is that Delta State player who got hit to the ground. I think he was the player who did get hit to the ground by Freeman at the end of that run. Is slow to get up around the 30-yard line of the numbers, far side of the field. You never, uh, you never like holding calls because a lot of times you think that you got ripped off and that really wasn't holding. But Ladies and gentlemen, let's <laughs> that was holding. A picture it's perfect. If, at the uh, Gulf South Conference uh, uh, officials uh, conference, 
that they're going to have in a couple of months, that's what they're going to show. And this is holding. That will go in that, the textbook. That, that's going to be it. Isaac Warren, a senior from Tyler, Texas, Northwestern NCAA State transfer. Number four, Isaac Warren. He's the injured statesman. It is now going to hold it his left 16. wrist as he comes NCAA over to the DSU sideline. So after the penalty, second down and 16 to go for Mississippi College. Backed up to the 50-yard line. 10-29 to play in the second. 14-0 Delta State is the score. The receiver to the short side of the field to the right. Everybody else bunched up in tight. Kroger goes in motion. Fizel option keeper. And he gets a yard off to the left side. So it's third down and long for MC. Brought down by number 45, Devontre Henderson. So the Choctaw's going to have to go for it here on third down and 15. They will need the 34 yard line to convert. 14 for the Choctaws of Mississippi College. Choctaws was in Kroger and Rotenberry. Wide to the right side with Kroger in the slot. Lampkin is the fullback. Mark wing back to the right side. Fiesel up under center. Floats back. Rolls out right side. Under pressure. Is going to let it go in trouble. And it's incomplete. And no flags. Throws the ball away. With the intended receiver, Rotenberry, along the near sideline. And I think Fiesel was just lucky to get that ball away. Yeah, the, the pressure for Delta State was up in the grill of Fiesel. Wasn't able to have much time and finally able just to get it away. Um, Choctaws are going to have to live for another day. It's in their punting unit on fourth down and uh, long right now from just inside Delta State territory. Well, I think the Choctaws are really feeling the absence of Dietrich Hawthorne today. The junior from Collins, who started every game this year at quarterback, so quick with that first step, and he's out for today's game in the concussion protocol as of last Monday, not cleared to play. And the punt taken to the 10 of the Choctaw coverage is excellent. They'll push him back to the five. That's about as good a kick coverage as the Choctaws have had all year. Comes at the absolute best time. Yeah, you down 14 done. to nothing with 9 10 to play in the second. They're yeah, able to get him all the way down. Uh, uh, looks like they're going to mark. I guess his forward progress was stopped about the nine yard line. They're going to put him at the nine. I don't know. That's about where he made the yeah. catch. First down and 10. Well, so the state's been backed up deep, the and the Choctaws oh, need to Delta keep them there. 14 0 Delta State, 9 10 to play, second quarter from Cleveland. Two receivers to the right, one to the left side. Patrick Shegog, the quarterback, turns and gives to Wilson, the running back, strung out along the right side. Choctaw defenders get there and bring him down at the 11. Derek Hawthorne, the first man there, and Brandon Pete came over to help finish him off. Yeah, good play by the defensive uh, uh, personnel there for Mississippi College over to the right side, able to really bottle up that run and uh, bring up a second down and about seven. Second down and eight. Delta State Delta has State. 120 yards rushing, 31 passing in this game. So you know what they're going to do for the most part as Shegog hands it off, sweet now to the right side. And again, not a lot, just out off to the right 12, the maybe a yard, in fact. That's all. Three. And it's Wilson on the carry again. It's third and long for DSU. And this is where the Choctaws have got to get off the field defensively. Delta State's three third of three on seven. third downs, third and this is a team that's last in the conference coming in, converting on third downs. Third and seven here. They need the 19. Choctaw show blitz. Shegog takes the snap, throws right side, got a man there, and it's going to be dropped in heavy traffic intended for Tyler Harrell. We've got a flag on the near side of the field. I think the Choctaws came across the line if they were not encroached. Yeah, I think it's going to be a uh, offside penalty. It is offside. offside against the Choctaws. So the first time we really see the Choctaws blitz and they come across the line, and this means a third and three now opportunity for Delta State. So two penalties against the Choctaws, and they've really come at inopportune moments. As Delta State's going to get a third and we'll say two from their own 17-yard line. Two receivers to the left side for Delta State. Shegog with the running back to his left. That's Wilson. 
He'll take the snap, going to run it himself, following the block of his lineman. First down and more, 30, 35, 40 to the far side. And he's going to have to outrace the Choctaw secondary to get to the the end zone. He's down to the 25 and tackled to the 24-yard line. Elijah Rogers was in hot pursuit and finally caught up to him. Yeah, he had nothing but real estate. She got just ran out of gas around the 35-yard line. And uh, the defensive backs from Mississippi College were able to catch him. But uh, just a good blocking, interior blocking. When he broke free on the right side, it was nothing but real estate in front of him. So Delta State not only converts on third and two, but they get the ball all the way down to the other end of the field to the 24-yard line. And it'll be a first and ten for Delta State from there. 14-0 states, seven and a half to play in the second. And this is Wilson straight ahead. Upended by Calvin Sims Jr. after a two-yard gain. Picks up the short gain for the statesman. I don't want to say this is a, an opportunity here that the Choctaws have to take advantage of in terms of keeping Delta State out of the end zone. But you don't want to go down three touchdowns here in the late part of the second quarter. Second down eight for Delta State. Empty backfield, Chigog takes the snap, looking to throw, pressure applied, wrapped up at the backfield and crushed at the 31-yard line. Quentin Frazier comes in to make the stop along with D.J. Smith, the nose tackle, and Chigog was immediately swamped. Big play by Frazier, Frazier and Smith around, uh, were able to break through the, the offensive line of Delta State, pushing back all the way, it looks like to be about the 28-yard line. Again, that's just only the second time, I believe, the Choctaws have shown a blitz in this game First time they got a penalty on an offside call. That time a loss of four yards. She got back to pass again. And the pass is caught at the 30-yard line. And the receiver is going to be tackled by the shirt tail by Calvin Sims Jr. at the 28. So maybe a yard or two. That's it. And it's going to be fourth down from the 23-yard line. And Delta State is going to go for it. It looks like on fourth down here. Yeah, you don't see any kicker coming out. It looks like they are going to go for it. They need to reach the 14 to convert. It's fourth and fourth and 14, Delta State. Next to last in fourth down opportunities this year, 35%. Fourth and 14. Shigog takes the snap. Looking back. Now flushed out to the right side. Going to run with it and throw at the last minute. Pass caught at the 20 and upended the receiver is at the 16. Two yards shy of the line to gain for the first down. Elijah Rogers. Made the tackle that saved the first down. The catch was made by number 18, Dion, uh, Dylan Helm. And the Choctaws will take over deep in their own territory. But that was a must, really, a must stop for the Choctaws. Yeah, good turnover on downs for uh, Mississippi College. And now let's see if we can get some get some uh, yardage behind us, get some points on the board here late in the second quarter. 5.26 to play in the second quarter. Delta State 14, Mississippi College nothing. Choctaws with the football now. And those take over at their own 16, moving left to right here in the second period in Cleveland. Cole Rotenberry, the right receiver, out to the right side of the formation on first and 10. As Fiesel goes up under center, fakes to the first man, gives to Kroger. Nice seam, left side to the 20, 25, first down. Out to the 27-yard line for Drew Kroger. Good blocking on the left side of that line for MC. It seems like a lot of those plays are there. You get... Runs of 11 and 12 and 13 yards, and 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 then it just kind of bottles up and, and stalls down. Let's see if we can put, string together a lot of those uh, to get the ball down the field so we can get some points on the board. First down pickup for Mississippi College. And First the line of scrimmage is the 27. Ball on the far hash. Man in motion to the near side, and Lampkin through the line in a hurry across the 40, across midfield, down to the 40, being dragged, dragging people with him. Inside the 40 of Delta State, Tiberius Lampkin with the strongest run of the day for the Choctaws. Okay, when you're a defensive back, number four for Delta State, what you don't want to do is drag Tiberius Lampkin 
the direction he's running at the same time to try to tackle him. Yeah, that's what Because Lampkin was <laughs> pumping those legs, and uh, I promise you, their defensive back drug him four yards. Yeah, I wonder if that was indeed Warren trying to slow him down. He was the one who went off of that what looked to be a wrist injury earlier. May not have been able to get a good grasp on Tiberius, but then again, not many people can. 5'9", 220 is Tiberius. First down to the 40-yard line, officially of Delta State. And the play is blown dead. Timeout, Choctaws. 4-14 remaining, second quarter. 14 to nothing, Delta State. The Choctaws have the ball at the Delta State 40-yard line, looking down on the field. Nearby the Heritage Bell Trophy, we see just kind of loitering around is the okra, the Delta State okra, their mascot. He, he almost like he's... It's almost like he did. he's not supposed to be on the field. You know, he's kind of loitering to like, okay, yeah, am I really supposed to be here? Or he he I, doesn't have a press pass. He doesn't have the, the sideline right pass. He's not around his neck. Of course, he doesn't have a neck. You know, you got to have a neck to have something hang around the neck. Yeah, he's got he a doesn't frown. Have a neck. I guess you could put it on the stem. It looks like, yeah. <laughs> he's got a frown. He's got a long nose. He and, said, uh, he's, he's waving at us. Hi. You seem to think he's angry. Yeah, I think frowning. he's angry. He looks sad. He looks sad. First and 10 for the Choctaws to the Delta State 40-yard line. A wide out to either side for MC. And this is going to be a pitch back to Kroger on the left side. Good block. And Kroger's loose to the far sideline to the 20, to the 15, and he slips down there. And the Choctaws are in the red zone. First down. And credit Jamori Mark for springing Drew Kroger free. That was a great block. That's how you block it, without holding, without tackling. And, uh, man, just a great run to the far side. And uh, Mississippi College in business. And we're in the red zone now. Yes, the red zone, not, not the, the green, green zone. zone. We're in the red zone. That was the same play the Choctaws ran. They got called back for holding earlier. So it's first and ten for the Choctaws. The Delta State 16-yard line. And it's Lampkin. And Lampkin with the pile pushing him down to the ten. Picks up, let's see, nearly six yards. Best scoring opportunity of the afternoon for MC with three and a half to play in the second half, second quarter, I should say. 14-0 Delta State is the score. Yeah, this MC tries to cut the lead in half. Yeah, this will be a big shot in the arm. Get some points here. Uh, come a little closer, and you're back in this ball game with a score. Second down four. Lined again to pick up the first down is the six. Lampkin is the fullback. Fiesel up under center and misdirection, and it's marked up the middle inside the five and down to the four. Well-designed and well-executed play for MC. First down for the Choctaws. Goal to go from the Delta State four-yard line. Goal to go for MC. Ball is marked at the four-yard line of Delta State. Looking for their first points of the day, and the Choctaws have it at the Delta State four. Wide out to either side. Fiesel up under center. Lampkin behind him. Man in motion comes to the near side. And now a new play call comes in from the Choctaw sideline. So they'll reset. Lampkin still goes up under center. First down, goal to go from the four. Mark in motion. And it's going to be Fiesel calling his own number, and he reaches to the goal line, and he got in. Touchdown, Choctaws. Fiesel reached Touchdown. over the goal line with the football, was lucky he didn't lose it before he broke the plane. The score counts, and the Choctaws are on the board. Yeah, good play by Fiesel. Fake the handoff. Everybody thought Lampkin was going to get the ball. He kept it, uh, it, dipped his shoulder around the two-yard line, was hit, and was not able to get really close to the goal line, except he just extended those arms and put the ball. That's all you got to do. That, that's when it helps to be six feet four yes. inches tall. So a touchdown for the Choctaws. Aaron Fiesel with a rushing touchdown, point after by Drake McCarter is good. He's missed only one all season. And the Choctaws are on the board with 2.29 to play in the second quarter. It is 14 to 7, Delta State. Everybody, get on your feet. Everybody does not, for the record. And the short kickoff taken a fair catch at the 28 yard line. So. Short kick State there by McCarter. The and Delta line. State will start Ladies their first and, and there is a ten. White Toyota with license plate CMG five one four. You are blocking somebody's driveway. I don't know CMG why I'm laughing. I, it, the, the, the PA well, here's scary. the reason why we are so <laughs> high above Parker Field here. All the the bleed, there's lots and lots of seats here, lots and lots of bleachers. Most everybody is down to the lower half where there's sunshine. There's very few 
in the upper half where there's right. shade, and, and so we, there's a lot of space. We get a lot of the PA, therefore. Right. <laughs> Pass right side, caught. Receiver weaves his way out across the 35, so it's second down three coming up for Delta State. They have all three of their timeouts with 218 and counting to play here in the first half. Picks up seven on the play. Second down, second down three for Delta State at their own 36-yard line. Shigog, the quarterback, steps back. Now flushed out, going to scramble, has the first down of the 42 as he slides down. And that's another Delta State. That'll be a first down from there. Yeah, good, good decision by Shigog. That not, not, didn't have any open receivers. A good, good job by uh, the Choctaws covering up. Was able to get, uh, get the first down run. First and 10 from the 40-yard line for Delta State, their own 40. Shigog drops back. Pressure applied, it's picked up. Pass is intercepted by the Choctaws. Turner Rodenberry running the other way down the near sideline. Rodenberry inside the 30, and the Choctaws are set up inside the 30 with 1.39 to play in the second quarter. Yeah, you got a couple of timeouts, too. Great play by Rodenberry. He was able to jump that route. And just a poor throw by Shegog, a poor decision. But, heck, we'll take it as a Choctaw. Now you got a chance to get some more points with 139 left to go in the half. 11th interception thrown by Shegog this year. The fourth interception by Rotenberry. And the Choctaw's 12th as a team this season tied for most in the Gulf South Conference. So a first down for the Choctaws to the Delta State. 27 is the first turnover of the game. Advantage Choctaws. Now they've got a minute 39 with two timeouts remaining to try to get points on the board. Fiesel steps back, going to throw, screen, caught, Mark to the 20, far side, 15, 10, 5, Jamori Mark scores, touchdown, Choctaws. What a great play. Everybody thought Fiesel was coming to the right side of the field. And just a little outlet for Mark, and he was able to get the ball around the 30-yard line, and there was nothing but clear sailing to the end zone. And now the Choctaws, just like that, are a PAT away from tying this game. Jamori Mark caught the pass. It's the second touchdown pass for Aaron Fiesel of the season. And even though it will go down as a touchdown reception, it's, it's a lot of yards after the catch. They got it done. The point after is good, and with a minute 31 to play. What a turnaround late in the second quarter. It's Delta State 14, Mississippi College 14. This is Joel Williams' second stint as offensive coordinator at Delta State. And now he's going to have his offense out on the field with a minute and 30 to try to do something with it and regain the lead that has disappeared in the last couple of minutes of this second quarter. Kickoff taken inside the goal line and run out to around the 30 at a minute 25 showing on the clock. Yeah, the blink of an eye, you know, what, four minutes ago we were packing up the gear and heading home. (laughs) You were. Well, no, you know. know, Yes, you're right. It was 14 to nothing and looked like no hope. Well, momentum certainly was on Delta State's side. No doubt about it. But that six-play 83-yard drive and then the – after the interception by Rotenberry, one play, 27 yards, and we're tied at 14. First and 10 for Delta State. Handoff is to Wilson out to the 30. They go, and now the Choctaws, I think, are going to call a timeout, or they might think about it here, if not here, on the Wilson next play. The the clock rolls play. down to near a minute to play in the second, and Delta State's still at their own 29. No gain on that play, second and 10. Choctaws have... Second and nine. I think two timeouts to play. Yeah, two timeouts to play with. Shegog's going to run it himself out to the 34. Shegog on the keeper, short gain on the play. So third and we'll say five coming up for Delta State as the clock rolls to 50 seconds. So if they can stop them on third down, the Choctaw is probably going to use that timeout here, but Delta State not in any hurry to run a play. Really, I think you're, what you're looking at here, you're looking at two offenses that are fairly one-dimensional today, and the Choctaws got a nice run after a catch for that last touchdown, but DSU hasn't shown a lot through the air themselves. And on third and six, it'll be a running play out to the 42. That'll be a first down pickup. The clock stops with 19 seconds and that's another to play. State. 91 total pass yards in this game and well over 300 rush yards combined. Clock rolls 17 seconds, and I don't think DSU is going to run into the play. They are going to go back and lick their wounds a little bit in the locker room 
after giving up a 14 point lead late in the second quarter. The Choctaws come up with two scores late in the half and we'll go to the locker room all tied at 14. All right, the second half is underway. A very quick short kick by Drake McCarter taken at the 35. Notice the Choctaws have done that a couple of times tonight and the kick coverage this year has been less than stellar for MC. So not giving the Statesman a chance to return kicks. DSU will start at their own 30 yard line on this, the opening drive of the third quarter here in Cleveland. Delta State has won 21 and lost 15 in this series. There have been two ties over the years. Choctaws haven't won since 1993. Trying to start a new trend here this afternoon. Flat pass to the right side is caught. The receiver runs out of bounds at the 36-yard line. A six-yard pickup on first down. Jake McDonald, a junior receiver from New Albany. Gulf Coast transfer on the catch. It's going to be really important for Mississippi College to try to get off the field when it comes on the defensive side of the ball here early in this third quarter. Set the tone for the second half and see if we can get a victory here. Second down four from the 36. Shigog turns, gives to Wilson straight ahead. And he needed the 40 for the first down. He's got the 38 and that's it. And we've got a whistle and a flag coming in late. And I think they're going to get the Choctaws for um, a late hit of some sort. Personal foul it is. That's unfortunately DJ Smith, the nose tackle, who played too long after the whistle and going after the quarterback. Yeah, just another mental error by the Choctaws. We've uh, we said that's kind of been the Achilles heel throughout the, uh, the, the latter part of this season is mistakes like that, late hits, uh, personal fouls, unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. And uh, that, uh, that's a definitely a, a, a no-no and another mistake. 15-yard penalty, moves the ball all the way inside Choctaw territory and sets Delta State up with a first down. And, and you had a third down opportunity to get off the field before that, that penalty. Speaking of off the field, uh, Choctaw's defensive end Fred Walls walks off the field towards the Choctaw sideline. He had knelt down for just a bit. And uh, he's moving around okay. And so is the Choctaw defender on that particular play. Wow. It's going to be a quarterback sack back to the 48-yard line for the Choctaws. Uh, I think that's uh, 21. Is that 21? That yeah, is. That's was Colton McGee. Yep. Nice play by Colton McGee, and that's a loss of five yards. I was watching Walls over behind the Choctaw sideline. He just kind of looked a little disoriented. Second down, 15 after that sack, backed up to their own 48. Delta State has the ball moving left to right. Shegog's going to fake the handoff and run it up the middle, and Shegog is down to the 40-yard line. So he gets 11 yards to set up a third and four. Good play by Shegog. He just kind of dipsy dude through the line and tiptoed a little bit. Was able to get the uh, uh, a nice gain, 11 yards, and bring it to like a third down and manageable for the uh, for the statesman. Delta State, five of six on third downs in the first half. Third and four here. They need the 37-yard line to convert. Two in the backfield along with Shegog, who will take it himself straight ahead, and he didn't get there. Not nearly did he get there. Tackled from behind by Michael Washington, Jr. at the 40. It's fourth down and three. Yeah, good penetration by the defense. Uh, I think she got, thought it was going to be just kind of a Kind of an easy tiptoe to the yeah, first down. But it blocking was never materialized. Yeah, They're going to go for it on fourth and three. They need the 37 to convert. Or will they? Maybe they try to drive the, draw the Choctaws off sides. The Choctaws looking like they want to blitz with a linebacker here. Fourth down three. There's the snap. Shegog rolls out right side being chased. Pass right side caught at the 31. And that is a first down. And the catch is made by Benji Galbraith, his second of the year. No, the Delta State's got some sizable receivers. They just had trouble getting the ball to those receivers. Uh, Galbraith uh, double t uh, did a little bobble there with that ball, but finally able to get it get it into the bread basket and, and out of bounds for the first. So a first down for Delta State of the Choctaw 31, 14-14 game early in the third quarter. Tight end moves to the right side. Wilson, the running back, and he'll get the carry. Straight ahead he goes, and he's out across the 25 and out across the 20. Down to the 19-yard line. Good strong one by Keelan Wilson, who had 69 yards and a touchdown in the first half. That is number 28, 
Keelan Wilson. And that's another Delta State. So Delta State with a first down to the 19 of MC. 14-14 game, under 12 minutes to play in the third. And she got hands it to Wilson again. Same play, different result, only about three yards as the Choctaws catch up to him. It's Derek Hawthorne, the safety, coming up to make the stop, and it's second and seven. Except three on the play. Second down and seven for your green and white. Three wide receivers to the left side for Delta State on second and seven at the 16-yard line. Hand off to Wilson. Right side again, and uh, he's inside the 15 down to the 12. Shy of the line again for the first down. So third and four upcoming for DSU. I think we're going to see a lot of this from each team in the second half. Yeah, only pass when you need to in long situations, and uh, I think both teams are going to do that throughout the rest of this ball game. Big third down play here, third and three. Ball's just inside the 18-yard line. Line to gain for the Delta State Statesman is the nine. Third down three. And Shigog is going to fake the handoff, try to find some room up the middle, and the Choctaws corral him at the 10. I don't think he got there. Yeah, he's a yard short, it looks, Reed. Turner Rotenberry is there. Let's see where they spot the football. It is going to be short indeed at the 10-yard line. It is fourth down. Rotenberry, one of the first guys there for MC. It's fourth down for Delta State, clearly in field goal range, but they're thinking touchdown. So fourth down at a yard from the 11-yard line. Shigog looks over to the sideline, gets another play. On fourth down and really less than a yard. He'll run it himself off right tackle, and he's got the first down out to the five. She got on the keeper, and that's another Delta State. Running behind the redshirt senior Chris Jones out of Decatur, Georgia, the right tackle. And that's a first down pickup. Yeah, that's who you want to run behind. That, uh, that experienced lineman was able to get enough yardage for the first down, bring up a first and goal. Down to the four. First and goal for Delta State. Statesman send two receivers off to the left. And Shigong takes the snap, hands to Wilson, cuts to the right side, and dives over the goal line for the Delta State touchdown. They ran that play four times on that drive and scored on the last time they run it. Uh, just a tone-setting drive by Delta State here in the first uh, part of this second half. And uh, to get the points on the board, 20 to 14. And now uh, Delta State's on for the extra point. Point after try coming for Taylor Crabtree. Snap, hold, kick is away, and the kick is good. 9.26 to play third quarter. Delta State now leads 21 to 14. All right, the kickoff now. The Choctaws have the man inside the five to take it. It's Mark, and Mark to the right side, 20, 25. Out of bounds, the 27. Mark on the return for the Choctaws. Well, I've heard the uh, the new president's name. Dr. Blake Thompson. Know where he's from. Yes, Ryanzi, Mississippi. Know where uh, he was before he came to MC. Yes. The Ohio State University. Yes. Had never seen his picture before. So if, if he got off a bus at a Love's <laughs> truck stop in Indianola, Mississippi, and I talked to him, I would have no idea who he oh, okay, was. All right. Well, that's who he was. So now I know. Yeah, he, we, we met up with the bus that he was traveling with the students at the truck stop there in Indianola on the way up here. First and 10 for Mississippi College at the 26-yard line, and the Choctaws will hand it off, and it's Lampkin out to the 30. Now, in fairness, you asked me a moment ago, who was that young man that you were talking Absolutely. to? Absolutely. Per- I yeah. thought he was maybe a, you know, a. Second down, seven to go. I don't, <laughs> go ahead. I don't want to say recruiter, but <laughs> that's what that's what and that's yeah. that's what you, that's what you need. Yeah, I mean that is absolutely what you need. Yeah, we're we're really we're cool. so blessed to have him with us, and he is uh, is he. You, you talk to him for five minutes, you understand he is a student first kind of president. We're grateful to have him. There's an option pitch back right side. Jamori Mark cannot turn the corner. Dropped for a loss. On the play, good pursuit by Delta State, and it's third down and long for MC. 
Yeah, I wouldn't have known if he'd had paint on his face. I wouldn't. I mean, I, it, well, he would have fit in. I don't think he's one of those Civitan guys over there with, with the paint on, but you never know. All right, third and ten for MC, trying to convert and uh, move the chains on this drive. We've got 8-16 to play in the third. 21-14, Delta State is the score. Choctaws have three receivers here, two to the left, one to the right side. Fiesel up under center for MC. He'll step back under pressure, and he goes down back of the 23. The pocket collapsed in a hurry, and the Choctaws go three and out. Yeah, it really looked like a blown play. Fiesel turned around and looked like he was supposed to hand the ball off to somebody, but guess what? Somebody wasn't there. There was nobody there, and uh, just, just ate it there. Now fourth down, and the uh, Choctaws are going to have to put the ball away. And in case you missed the information that we've been sharing earlier in the broadcast today, the Choctaws starting quarterback, Dietrich Hawthorne. He started all nine games this year, unavailable today in the concussion protocol as of last Monday, not cleared to play. And so it's been Fizella quarterback for Mississippi College today. Good punt by McCarter. Backed up the receiver to the 30 and the return out to the 37. And Delta State will start their first and 10. Cole Rotenberry on the special teams tackle. Well, we did see how the fortunes for the Choctaws changed in a hurry late in the second quarter with two touchdowns in the last two and a half minutes. One on a six play 84 yard drive. The other that came on the first play after an interception. And now Delta State scoring on their opening drive of the third. Choctaws going three and out on their opening drive of the third. And for Delta State, it is a welcome sight to have a second half drive that has some length and points at the end of it. First and 10 here. And it's Wilson going to the left this time out to the 45. Well, li listen to what Delta State did last week against West Georgia in their 29-17 loss. Now, they led that game by five of the half, but they lost by a dozen. Their second half drives last week, three plays, two yards, two plays, minus seven. Three plays, five yards. Three plays, no yards. Three plays, minus three. Seven plays, 30 yards, and a missed field goal. One play, no yards. Five plays, no yards. As they give it to the running back again, out to the 47 of the first down here. So last week in the second half, Delta State ran 27 plays and got 27 yards. Doing much better early in the second half of today's game. First down pickup there for Wilson out to the 47. Delta State leads it by seven, 21 to 14. And this is going to be a quarterback draw, and Shegog into the clear. And down to the 25, he goes before he's wrestled to the ground by Elijah Rogers. Yeah, that's just been a problem the whole game for the Choctaws. Containment on the quarterback uh, once uh, he chooses the uh, the run option of the run pass option and uh, chooses just to keep the ball. He's just been a nightmare when he breaks through that offensive line. So first and 10 for Delta State of the Choctaw 27. See if the Choctaw defense can stiffen here. Three receivers to the right side for Delta State. Choctaw showing blitz. Here they come and they got to him in the backfield after the handoff to the running back Wilson. It's Zaire Velasquez, the junior from San Diego, who comes in and makes the stop for a loss. Yeah, real good play by Velasquez. He was able to come in and uh, just kind of uh, avoid his blocker, get in the backfield and make the, make the big play. That's what the Choctaws needed up front. Loss of four yards, second down 14 for Delta State. Again, two receivers now to the left side. Wilson, the running back. Now they'll switch formations. Wilson goes to the left of the quarterback. On second down, 14, and the quarterback's going to run it, following a block out to the 25. So he got back to the original line of scrimmage, plus a couple of yards. Third and eight coming up for Delta State. Now, I know it's always not going to be this way, but when they've made that shift pretty much the whole first half and into this first part of the second quarter, wherever they've made that shift, they're just setting up the blocking for uh, Shegog to take a quarterback keeper right behind those fullbacks and, and running backs that have, that have moved on the shift. And they've been very efficient at yeah. doing so. Third and eight, the Delta State line to gain is the Choctaw 17. 
Again, here comes the Choctaw pressure. Pass right side caught at the 20. He didn't make it. Good coverage by the Choctaw defender. Elijah Rogers is there to make the tackle. Tyler Harrell on the catch. He's had a good season, but he's been quiet today. Three touchdowns coming in. Fourth and one. Delta State's going to go for it, leading by seven with 4.05 to play in the third. They just need the 17-yard line. One more yard to convert. Chigog looks over to Todd Cooling on the sideline, gets the new play call. Fourth down and a yard for Delta State. Quarterback run, first down pickup. Out to the 16. Shegog zigzags his way up the middle. Patrick Shegog, the and freshman from Delta South State. Panola High School in Batesville. Perhaps the quarterback of the future here at Delta State. Breck Ruddick, the senior from Marion, Arkansas, and Missouri State transfer who last year passed for 148 and ran for 124, 272 total against the Choctaws. He went out in game two of the season, injured and has not returned. And a running play goes nowhere for Keelan Wilson. In fact, they lose a yard on the left side. And all Chicago's going to do is get better. I mean, yeah. you know, they've had some problems with accuracy with all the interceptions, but you can see he has command of the offense. And, of course, uh, with his legs, he's going to have always – yeah, he'll always be able to get out of trouble when he's a passing situation with his with his feet, and um, he's going to be a a player to reckon with uh, throughout the next couple of years here in the Gulf South Conference. Well, Delta State didn't set out to run the same kind of offense as the Choctaws this year, but effectively that's what they're doing. It is run three times, pass every once in a while. Second down, twelve. Choctaws again come. Delta State picks it up, pass right side, caught, touchdown. Delta State as the receiver stumbles into the end zone. And the State would stretch their lead to two scores. Uh, that was the same slant pattern that they scored on their first uh, touchdown of the ball game. And again, uh, Delta State strikes again, caught around about the five-yard line and kind of stumbled uh, into the end zone, but still enough for a touchdown. Leon Green with his second touchdown catch of the afternoon. So he's doubled his touchdown receptions here today. Point after is good. And with 2.39 to play in the third quarter, it's Delta State 28, Mississippi College 14. Kickoff taken at the 10, returnable. Jamori Mark to the 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 44. Nice return, one of the best really of the season for MC. And the Choctaws have excellent field position to start this drive and yeah. uh, Mississippi State and Alabama are underway and Bob what's the score yeah f- uh, middle of the second quarter 14 to nothing Alabama so it's respectable yeah, yeah. still early first and 10 for the Choctaws not quite as early here in Cleveland as we are 231 to play in the third the Choctaws trailing by two touchdowns good field position to start this drive with their own 44 and this is a running play, and it is going to be Lampkin off the right Lampkin side. The nothing. Side is stacked up by a Congress of statesmen. Lampkin stopped, as you heard, by a Congress. A Congress of like statesmen. That. That's, 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 that's good. Nice. Congress of statesmen. Te- technically, he's correct. That, that's short gain on the play. Uh, now, uh, if we hear a caucus of statesmen, we'll know we're on to something. Second down nine after a one-yard game. By the way, Lampkin, 62 yards in the first half, five yards so far in the second half. Second and nine for Mississippi College. And this is Fiesel on a keeper following his block. Lots of room to run across the 40. 35, down to the 30s. He takes a big hit on the left side. First down, Choctaws. And that is not Lampkin. Instead, it is the backup quarterback for today. Number 12, Kyron Williams, the redshirt senior from Dothan, Alabama, who is getting his first action of the year. Kyron Williams, 5'10", 195, physically a lot more like the starter for most of the season, Dietrich Hawthorne. We talked to Kyron a couple of weeks ago for our pregame, and uh, he was anxious to maybe get the the game today, and he's going to get a chance to play. And he hands it off here across the 30, a limited gain to the 28 for the Choctaw running back. 
a little Freeman. Quick, yeah, a little quicker than Fiesel. A little Williams was uh, a little, uh, got a quicker first step. But we'll see how this kind of ignites this offense. As soon as he took off, I thought, man, he's running a little fast for Aaron, even though Aaron's quick. And it is Kyron right. Williams. Good to see him get a chance to play today and hopefully lead the Choctaws to a come-from-behind win. He's been the third-string quarterback all year, and he's been uh, uh, just an outstanding stand-up kind of guy in that role. Second down, and we'll say a long eight, and this is going to be Lampkin, and he carries ball, uh, uh, carries the ball and carries players with him down to the 19. First down pickup. I mean, he, he was carrying a Congress yeah, of statesmen. A Congress of statesmen, yes. And he's got a first down to the 19. Ball is marked down at the About seven of those yards came state. after first contact. First down for the Choctaws in the red zone of the 19 of Delta State. Man goes in motion to the far side. And this is going to be Lampkin again off right tackle to the 15. Second down, six upcoming for MC. But talking about Kyron Williams, here's a guy who two years ago started a handful of games when the Choctaws had some quarterback issues. And now he's going to get a chance to perhaps lead the Choctaws to a victory on the last game of the season. But they've got work to do. We'll go to the fourth. Delta State 28, Mississippi College 14. The skies parted for football today, and the Choctaws down 14 to start the fourth quarter. Second and six for MC at the Delta State 15-yard line with Kyron Williams in the ball game at quarterback for Mississippi College. And Williams hands it off, and this is Jamori Mark on a handoff to a fullback down to the nine-yard line. To Jamari Mark, not getting a lot of direct handoffs. He's more of a sweet kind of guy or pitch the ball to him and let him find some running room. But he lined up in the backfield there. And it's going to be a first down for MC at the Delta State 9. Ball is marked down at the 9-yard line. So Lampkin back in there at fullback. Williams goes up under center. First down, goal to go at the 9-yard line. Quick look over to the sideline, and Williams barks out the signal once more. Kroger goes in motion, and it's Williams who faked the handoff and just has to eat it back at the 10. And second down goal to go upcoming for MC. Drops. Drew Kroger. Yeah, Tiberius Lampkin pushing 100 yards gain on this uh, Football game, 94 yards to start of the first three quarters on 15 carries. Second down, goal to go from the 10. Lampkin the fullback, Williams up under center. Pitch back to Mark. Mark with a stutter step, and he's going to be crushed to the 11. Four or five gray jerseys are there to get Jamori Mark. Statesman just read it very, very well, and it's third and goal to go. Now you're down 14 early in the fourth. I, I honestly don't think it's fourth down territory here, but if you have to settle for a field goal attempt, then you've got to have your defense go out and make a stop. Goal to go for Let's see if the Choctaws can put it in the end zone on third down. Third down, goal to go from the 10-yard line on the right hash. Williams operates from the shotgun with Lampkin to his left. There's the snap. He rolls out, he's looking to throw, and he's sacked back of the 17. And a flag comes in at the end of the play. Eric Sadler, the defensive end from senior from Oklahoma City, I think is the man who's going to get credit for the sack. But let's see what this penalty marker is all about. I think I saw the official grab a face mask. Let's see if that's what it is. During the play, personal foul. Defense. Wow. Number 15. It is. Face. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Obenson Klednord, the linebacker. And that is down. huge because that takes it from fourth and about uh, 17 or fourth and goal to go from the 17. And now the Choctaws get a first down at the five yard line. I'm going to tell you, it must have been a big hands to the face because that flag came all the way from the far side of the field from the line. Yes. Five-yard line of your Big, price. big break for the Choctaws. 1240 to play in the fourth. They're down 28-14, and now a first and goal to go after the penalty at the Delta State 5. Lampkin is the fullback. 
Williams up under center. Starts a man in motion to the left side. Tiberius gets the call straight ahead. Tiberius Lampkin down to the one. Just shy of the goal line. Both officials from either side of the field rushing in to say just was short. They're going to hurry up to the line of scrimmage. Second and goal to go from the one. Williams up under center, and the pile pushes him forward for, let's see, no indication yet. Referees will huddle and say, Choctaw touchdown. Or do they say Choctaw no, touchdown? No, it looks like it's third play. down. Third down. He didn't get it. Third down. Third down and inches. Oh, he didn't get it, so third down. And now this Delta State crowd, which has been kind of sleepy all day on their homecoming, comes alive just a little bit. Third down. Choctaw's got to get a man in position. Now they do on the far side. That's Rodenberry. Lampkin, the fullback, third down, goal to go. Williams up under center. He'll take the hand off, take it, give it to Lampkin, and Lampkin on the right side, and he didn't get there, and it's fourth down. Well, this DSU team is fired up. From first and goal at the five to fourth down. And now I think you're at the one. It is go for it time. Yeah. The Choctaws are going to go for it. I think uh, the Choctaws are going to call a timeout here. I think that's a good decision. Uh, I there might be something wrong with Fizel. The reason I say that is because this is the perfect time That's true. for, That's a, right. for a, a quarterback his this size to be in here. Well, the Choctaws do call a timeout. I scanned the sideline, and I see Aaron over there. Well, no, I don't. Wait a minute. Six, not nine. See the defensive number nine. I'm looking for offensive number nine and where he might be. And I just, I, I'm not saying he's not there. I'm just saying I don't spot him and at the, the moment. Of our Foundation but, yeah, I think you're right. I think this is a time for the big body of Fiesel if he's available. But I didn't see him go off injured before Williams came in. Please report to the Make-A-Wish Foundation table on the main conference. Well, the, the hands to the face penalty got the Choctaws out of the fourth and 17 situation down to a first and goal at the five and they got to the one on first down and then back-to-back stuffs by the Delta State defense and now the Choctaws have a fourth down goal to go and I mean they're just inches from the goal line and it is going to be Kyron Williams back out at quarterback So much riding on this snap of the football for both these teams. Choctaw's down 14 with 10.54 to play in the game. Fourth down, goal to go from inside the one. Williams up under center. He'll take it. Give it to Lampkin. He'll dive over. Touchdown, Choctaws. Tiberius Lampkin couldn't get under twice, so he went over for the score. Yeah, great play by Lampkin. He uh, jumps up in the air and uh, puts the ball over the, uh, over the end zone. All you got to do is break that front plane. Uh, matching a big piece of glass right on the front of the end zone. All you have to do is touch the ball to it. And that's exactly what Lampkin did for the score. Big score for Mississippi College right there. Always an adventure when you go airborne. you got to make sure that ball, as you mentioned, does get across the plane, that it's not knocked away before it crosses the goal line. And Lampkin held on to it, and the point after is up. And, and it is good. good. And so the Choctaws have made it a one-score game with 10.51 to play. Delta State, 28. Mississippi College, 21. It's a seven-point contest with 10.51 remaining in the fourth quarter. Delta State, 21. Excuse me, Delta State, 28. Mississippi College, 21. I mentioned earlier, Delta State owns a 21-15-2 lead in this series. Last year, 30-17 Delta State victory. It was the only non-November game in this series, going way back when. We played on September 30th for some, quite frankly, dumb reason. The Choctaws were down just three at the half, and they had two third-quarter fumbles that led to 10 Delta State points, and that really was the difference in the game. There have been some memorable games in this series. Think back to the 1989 game, the year the Choctaws went to the national championship game and won. The Choctaws actually lost to Delta State the last game of that year, 17-7, yeah. Yo, Phil! 
I also remember for for uh, you know, reasons I'd rather forget, the last time these two teams met before the Choctaws made the move to Division Three, it was November 11th of 1995 here in Cleveland. 23 years ago tomorrow as the kick taken to the five yard line. A Delta State with a run back past the 30. Out to the 39, he nearly broke it. What, did you break your leg or something? Do you remember that date? No, I remember it because we were. it was the last game of the, of the Division II era at the time. Right, right, okay. It was the very, very last game before we went to Division Three, And uh, we came up here, lost 14 to nothing in just a natural surface field at the time in just muck and mire and cold. And we had guys that were injured. We had guys playing with all kinds of major bumps and bruises, and they fought so hard. And, and uh, that was a long time ago. George Broadstreet and I were up here calling that game, and we were, I remember it clearly. It's good to be back here under much better circumstances, and the Choctaws need a defensive stand here. Delta State runs on first down to the near side, and they've got a first down across the 50 out to the 47. Nothing up the middle. Brandon Pete runs the quarterback out of bounds at the 46 of the Choctaws. Mississippi College Territory, and that's another Delta State first down. The Choctaws have had chances to beat Delta State since the resumption of this series five years ago, but this is their best opportunity here today. They really need a defensive stop on this drive. First and 10 for the Statesman at the Choctaw 47. She got pump fake pass batted down by the Choctaw defender. Dalton Frederick, the redshirt sophomore defensive end from Bartlett, Tennessee. And that was a touchdown bat because if, he, if, if Frederick does not get his paw on that, on that ball, uh, they're still running because uh, the, the statesman had set up the screen, three big linemen in front of uh, the intended receiver. And like I said, they'd still be running on that one. Good job by Good Frederick. Yeah, he's playing in the place of, I think, Fred Walls at this point, second and 10 for Delta State, and a draw to Wilson, and Wilson up the middle to the 43. Yeah, Fred Walls went out. He's still on the sideline on the trainer's table. They've taken his shoulder pads and his jersey away and his helmet, too. i got to believe he got his, in the old-fashioned lingo, got his bell rung of some type. But uh, I think he's done for the day. Yeah, uh, Patrick Shegog, 19 rushes for 194 yards in this ballgame. Third down seven for Delta State. That's the quarterback making a lot of the offense happen. Sounds a lot like what the Choctaws have been yep. doing this year. Third down seven. Line to gain for Delta State is the Choctaw 37. Shegog from the shotgun. And he'll take the snap, go straight ahead, and the Choctaws wrap him up at the 41-yard line. Powell gets him to the 39, but it's still going to be Shegog well shy the of the line to gain for the first down. The last man up out of that pile for Mississippi College is the nose tackle, Calvin Bowman, the junior from West Monroe. Fourth and down. it is fourth and two for Delta State, and they're going to send the punting unit the out away. onto the field. Yeah, I think this is a good decision fourth by Delta down. State That's because uh, you, you've been MC. very successful on fourth down against Mississippi College. But if you don't get it here, you set up the Choctaws with great field position. They're going to punt it, try to pin the Chocks back, see what the Choctaws can do uh, once they get this ball in this next possession. First punt of the day for Delta State, and it's Crabtree who will do it, low kick, and uh, the Choctaws let it go out of bounds, and it'll go uh, to the 10, perhaps. Not even that far. We'll start at the 8 with 8.43 to play in the fourth quarter. And Delta State leading MC 28 to 21. So here we go. First down and 10 for the Choctaws. All you can ask is a chance to win at the end. And the Choctaws are giving themselves this opportunity. Credit the Choctaw defense. Once DSU got to midfield on that last drive, they were held up. And the Choctaws will have it first and 10 at their own eight yard line to start this drive with 8.43 to play in the game down seven. Williams is up under center. They'll give it to Lampkin. He puts his Shoulder pads down and uh, gets out to the 12. So second down at about six coming up for MC. Not a situation where you have to be in a hurry. The Choctaws have two timeouts remaining to use at their disposal and Delta State has three. Second down six for Mississippi College. 
Ball at the 12-yard line. Choctaw's moving left to right on the edge of the shadows on Parker Field. And straight ahead, it is Lampkin down to the 15. And now we're looking at third down three. Third and three for the Choctaws, who are just two of seven on third downs in this game. Look over to the sideline, get the play call. And now they'll break the huddle. Big third down opportunity here for the Choctaws. They need the 18 yard line to convert. Third and three, blitz shown, Lampkin between the tackles, got the first down out to the 25 yard line. And that was all Tiberius Lampkin because he hesitated before he made the run. If he takes off immediately, he runs into the back of a lineman. Yeah, he was able to uh, kind of wait to the opening, found the opening, was able to big, big first down for the Choctaws. Huge pickup to the 25 of Delta State, first and 10 for MC. Wideouts to either side. Lampkin, the fullback, at the 25 yard line. Tiberius gets the call. Another stutter step, this time to the 29 he goes. Lampkin on the short game. You know, if he can keep getting four or five yards a pop, he may get every carry on this on this drive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's been a, been the workhorse for Mississippi what. College during this ball game. Tiberius Lampkin, and this his final game as a Choctaw. Now has 106 yards. I say that in jest. Other folks will touch the football, but if he's able to keep moving, move the chains, take a lot of time off this clock. We're at 6:25 to play in the fourth. Choctaw's trail by seven, second down six. And Williams fakes the pitch, he's gonna throw. He's gonna let it go and it's underthrown and it is intercepted, no, incomplete at the 50 yard line. And it's a good thing it was underthrown because had it been thrown well, it would have been intercepted. There's a, and Williams is slow to get up on the turf. In fact, he hasn't gotten up at all. He was hit hard and now we see him moving as yeah, he's got his face down on the turf. Check that, no interception on the play. Well, now you got Kyron Williams, who is your third quarterback. Remember, Dietrich Hawthorne not available today in the concussion protocol. Aaron Fiesel started and left, and I don't know that he left due to an injury, but if Williams, who is – Still slow to get up. They've turned him over. He took quite a hit after that throw. He's going to have to come out for at least one play. That's, that's all the three quarterbacks the Choctaws have listed on the roster. I'm glad Dr. Thompson came on the bus. We might have put him in. Do you have any eligibility left? I do, but I can't help. Now, he took quite a lick, Kyron Williams did, and now he will get a little help over towards the sideline. Got a trainer on both arms. Now look, the problem with, you know, there are other quarterbacks on the team that played yes. quarterback in high school. Yes. There are probably not other quarterbacks on the team that played quarterback in high school and ran the triple option, though. That's well, your problem. I think the, the advantage the Choctaws here is you don't necessarily have to snap it to a quarterback. You can snap it to anybody who can run the ball. So John Bland is going to turn Mississippi College to, it looks like Cole Rotenberry. Yes, Cole Rotenberry, the junior from South Panola, the guy who started as a running back, went to receiver, now at quarterback for MC. He'll take the snap, and he'll run with it. Left side, trying to turn the corner at the 30, does, and he's got his shoulder pads down to the 37, out of bounds as he lost the ball out of bounds. It does go out of bounds. The Choctaws retain possession, and it's a first down pickup. You know, this is the Wildcat offense, really, of about four or five years ago. And you're gonna have, that's what you're going to have to do, and – and I think we got our answer if, if uh, Fiesel was hurt or not. Yeah, yeah mean, you're <laughs> right. You're absolutely right. We didn't see that. We just see we saw oh, Williams come in. I thought maybe Fiesel was struggling a bit, and he was to move the, the offense. But this is Rotenberry now at quarterback for the Choctaws. Who would have thunk this? First and 10 for MC at their own 36-yard line. And it's Lampkin on the handoff. He's out to the 40. Second and six coming up. And the clock rolls at five and a half minutes to play. Second down, six to go. Ball is everybody long. really, really went into line. today, everybody but those in the college. ultimate know, went into today thinking it would be Dietrich Hawthorne and would see what we've seen all year. Instead, 
We've seen now three other quarterbacks for MC. Second down, six from their own 40-yard line. Choctaw's trailing by seven late in the fourth. Rodenberry on a draw, keeps it himself to the near side. Turns the corner, 45, out of bounds to the 47. And it's going to be a first down pickup, I think, for MC. Let's see where he spot the ball. They needed the 46. He got the 47. Picks up the first down. First down, down Choctaw. Uh, real close there. Uh, he's able to get the first down and uh, keep the chains moving. Yeah, what? You couldn't have you couldn't have written this before we got here, no. could you? No, wouldn't wouldn't know what to write. You would know David dreamed this up on the way up, no, didn't you? No, he did not. <laughs> First and 10 for the Choctaws of their own 46. Under five minutes to play, and it's Roadberry handing it off. Lampkin straight ahead, out to the 50. Uh, Tiberius is getting about four or five yards a pop at this point of the fourth quarter, which is all you can ask for the big man. He's had an excellent two-year career at Mississippi College. Tiberius now at 110 yards on 23 carries. Remember I said earlier, we could see him carry the ball 30 times. He may get there before this is all said and done. It looks like uh, Kieran Williams is back in the game at quarterback. Second down and six. Indeed it is. Kieran Williams back in the ball game at quarterback. So Rodenberry did his job for sure. Second down six. Williams option back. Krogert at the 50. Krogert at the 45. And Krogert down near the 44. I don't think he got to the line to gain for the first down. So it'll be third down and less than a yard for MC. Uh, Good play by Kroger. uh, Just comes up a little short. It'll be one yard to go for the first down. I believe Kyron uh, Williams held that ball just a little longer before making that, maybe selling the, hey, I'm going to run it. No, I'm not. Or I'm going to run it. No, I'm not. Uh, But uh, still a third down situation here. And clock continues to roll under 330. 28-21, Delta State with the lead. Three and a half minutes to play in the game. Choctaws have the ball to the Delta State. 45-yard line, and it's Lampkin straight ahead for the first down to the 41. Clock will stop momentarily. Remember, the Choctaws have two timeouts remaining, and Delta State has all three. Spot the football as soon as the football is spotted. The clock rolls. First and 10 for MC at the Delta State 42-yard line. Kyron Williams up under center. And now he'll look to the Choctaw sideline and get another play. Barking out the instructions to the lineman. Lampkin, the fullback. Williams takes the snap and whistles. And the play clock was at eight, so a false start is the call here against MC. You know, this has been a relatively clean ball game in terms of penalties. That one's going to cost the Choctaws five yards. Really, in terms of penalties and the the word I don't want to say that usually kills you in a game. I'm not going to say it starts with a T. Only one of them, and it's gone the Choctaw's way. A Turner Roadberry interception that led to their second touchdown. That led to the tying score before the half. 2.42 and counting to play in the game. Delta State 28, Mississippi College 21. Each team with one conference win, and the Choctaw's trying to beat Delta State for the first time since the return to Division II. First and 10 for the Choctaw's, and now timeout is going to be called by MC. You got that third string quarterback uh-huh. in. Any any opportunity you have to clarify so that you don't do something you're not supposed to do. And Coach Bland sees that opportunity and takes it. Two minutes, 28 seconds remain in the game. Delta State 28, Mississippi College 21. The Choctaws have a first and 15 at the Delta State 47. They just called their second time out of the half. They've got one remaining. After the false start penalty, first and 15 for MC. Kyron Williams in at quarterback for the Choctaws. Up under center, he'll turn, looking to throw, now looking to run. And he's got a little space, and he's out to the 42, and that may be enough. Well, I say, no, I'm looking at the original line of scrimmage, Marcus. So he's back to the original line of scrimmage, and it's second and 10. All right, now if you're the Choctaws, you've got to play with a little more urgency. We're coming up on the two-minute mark. This is not an offense that's really designed to do this, but you got to do it. Second, down and Second and 10. Ultimately, this set of downs really becomes it for MC. At this point, it was with 157 to play in the game, and they're down seven. Second and 10 at the 42-yard line. Lampkin, the fullback. 
Williams takes the snap, pitch back, goes to Roneberry. He's looking to throw right side, and he throws it too long, and it is intercepted at the 10-yard line, and that will do it. Yeah. Good idea, but that's, uh, you know, Rodenberry should have seen. Uh, now, I think, I don't know if Sharp held up on the route, but, I mean, that ball was overthrown by about seven yards. And I understand you want to move the ball down the field in the hur in a hurry, but Rodenberry, who I think has thrown maybe one pass this year, it's an interesting time for him to throw his second pass of the season. It is intercepted by Darren Gardenhire, who made a nice catch and is down to the nine yard line. And I said that should do it. We got a minute 40 to play. Delta State's leading 28-21. And MC has just one timeout remaining, so perhaps if the Choctaws can stop them, they have a chance to get the ball back. But they've got to prevent them from getting a first down. So DSU with a first and 10 at their own nine yard line, leading by seven now late in the game. Shigog is gonna be stopped, pushed back, but he stays on his feet and he weaves his way out to the 17. And the Choctaws are forced to take their last time out, and Delta State's going to have a third and two. A minute 32 to play in the game. Delta State leads Mississippi College 28 to 21. The Choctaws with the interception, only the second turnover of the game, an interception for each team. And it was Cole Rotenberry who threw the interception on the pitch back from Kyron Williams. Williams was not the one who threw the pass. It was Rotenberry. And again, I don't know whether that was underthrown or whether Morgan, or overthrown, I should say, or Morgan Sharp stopped the route when he shouldn't have. But uh, the, the interception by Gardenhire. And now with second and two after the timeout, Choctaw's out of timeouts. A first down here ends the ball game. Shigog turns, gives to Wilson, and Wilson stopped back of the 16-yard line. Again, the Choctaws are out of timeouts. It's third down two, and the clock will roll. We're at a minute 21 to play. So Delta State can work this down to about 40 seconds or so before they have to snap the ball. It is third down three. Third down three to go. Best hope now is the Choctaws hold them on this third down and force Delta State to punt. I don't even know if DSU would do that. They could, in theory, take this down, take a timeout with about 43 seconds remaining and then run a play. And depending upon what happened on that play, even if they don't pick up the first down, they might could even on fourth down run it around for a while and, and run the clock out. Right. But it's 48 seconds to play now with a timeout called by Delta State and they have a third and three. Yeah, it, it, you know, that's one of the things you don't want to do is, uh, of course, punt in this situation, especially down that far in your own yes. in your own territory. Uh, 48 seconds left. Literally, they can run a play here. You know, really, you could run a play here and maybe not even have to run another play. Yeah. And of because course, the clock's going to reset at 40 seconds. Ladies right. And, and, and all that's assuming they don't pick up the first down. It's third Correct. and three. So. Well, if this yeah. outcome, if the game stays and ends with this outcome of 28-21, it is going to be another game that the Choctaws were oh so close and had chances to win. And you look at about three or four games on the schedule that were losses that very easily could have been victories. I say very easily. They could have been victories had some things bounced All the right. Choctaws' way that were in their, in their control. That turnover margin of minus four coming in. And uh, third down, three now it's goes. third down three for Delta State. They need to get to the 20-yard line to convert. 48 seconds to play in the game. Shigog takes the snap. He's going to run it right side, and he's going to get down to the 18, and he did he not get to the line again, I don't believe, for the first down. And there's a difference of three Work seconds play clock to game clock. That's it. And there is an injured player on the field. It's a Choctaw who is down. That is number 48, Justin Stewart, the linebacker, the senior from Laurel. And this stops the clock with 34 seconds to play. And the, and the play clock now is essentially turned off. 
I don't know if there's a 10 second runoff. I don't think like, so. Like no, in the, no, no. the not that I'm aware of. Conference, but. So the injured Choctaw is Justin Stewart, the yeah. senior from Laurel Gulf Coast transfer. They got him on his back. Now without this stoppage of play, Delta State would have called timeout with about three seconds. And they would have had to well, make I, a decision. I think they, they would have snapped the ball, run around snapped for a while. The ball. And Yes, and they would have sprinted to the back of the end zone. They could have taken a safety if they wanted yeah, to. And, 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 and it did not matter. And I, I, you know, funny, I remember calling a Clinton Arrows game, and that was how a game ended years and years and years ago. <laughs> funny how you remember some of that stuff. Let's well, let's hope that Stewart is okay as he's going to get some help. Right. He's not putting a lot of weight on that left yeah, leg. Yeah, that's not good. Of course, a Super Bowl, but three or four years ago, down in New Orleans ended that way. But yeah. it didn't end that way, but you know, there was it a happened. safety. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the Ravens took a safety. You know. Yep. It was the right. It was the right call at the right time. You know. Well, in yeah. some really strange, and we don't like to say it, but it's true, strange Here's way, the the, by the this injury by the Choctaw. The College having their timeouts expired. We will have a 10 second there runoff. is a 10 second runoff. The play clock will be set to 40 seconds. Yes. So a 10 second runoff. But even with a 10 second runoff. It's going to be 24 seconds to play in the game, and it's fourth and one. And Delta State is, what are they going to do here? They're not going to do anything. This game's over. Yeah, that's right. They don't have to run the play because the clock starts automatically. You're right. That's right. That's it. They don't have to snap the football. Because the clock doesn't start with the snap, it started with the spot, and that's it. And uh, as you hear the announcement, the Heritage Bell Trophy stays in the Delta, and Delta State wins it 28 to 21 over the Choctaws here today in Cleveland.